6 with Dave McElhatton and Wendy Duc Let me first address an issue which was raised with me earlier and a question that I suspect is on the minds of some of the press as well. How am I taking this? My answer is, just like a man. <laughs> The voters of California have spoken, and I accept their verdict. And I accept it with equanimity, because when I entered this chamber of justice, I entered through those doors, I donned the robes of this office, and I took the oath of office, and the oath of office guaranteed to the people of this state that I would well and faithfully discharge my duties and that I would uphold and defend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I have tried during the years I have been in this position to do my very best to fulfill that obligation and responsibility to the people of this state. And so, this evening, I accept this decision, and I accept it with a conscience at peace. Let me first say something to the millions of California voters who voted today to retain the justices on the Supreme Court and who specifically voted for me. I want to thank you very much because I know you believe very deeply in the ideal of justice and believe that it is possible to have it as a reality in this day and age. It is possible to have a house of justice, not a house of puppets, not a house of politicians, not a house of powerful interests, but in fact, a house of justice. And most importantly, not a house of death, but a house of justice. I appreciate that some people within our state are impatient impatient to see executions. But I say to those who voted for us today that although my voice will go silent, yours will not. You still can fight for the principles that we stood for in this campaign. You still can fight to ensure that we retain this House of Justice. I don't think anybody in this state will sit easy if in fact this becomes a court that ensures nothing but executions to appease the overweening and insatiable appetite of ambitious politicians. And I do not think anyone will sit easy in this state if we see executions in order to mask what is really going on, and that is the interests of some powerful groups to bypass the legislative process and to subvert the judiciary so that they can have a compliant judiciary that will do their will and to have pliant judges who will assure their results. I may not be with you on this battle, it may be a long battle, but it is an important one for the people of this state. If we are to have executions in this state, it should be because the Constitution has been followed and the rule of law has been followed. It should be because, in fact, we have had fair trials. We need to continue this dialogue with the people of California to let them know that the rule of law has to apply not only to the weak, but to the powerful, and not only to the popular, but to the unpopular as well. And only you can continue that dialogue with the people. And it's important that we have it because as Thomas Jefferson said at the founding of our nation, and as he instructed us, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty, and I believe eternal vigilance is also the price of true justice. Let me, on a personal note, thank all the wonderful people who were so supportive during this period of time. This has not been an easy journey for any of us, but it has been an important one. And I'm very grateful to the people who have sent their support and love, not only in this state, from 
all over the country. You have enriched my life, and you have touched my heart in ways in which you can never truly know. Let me also thank the press for all of their courtesies to me and to my staff. Each of you has traveled down this new path with me, and I'm very grateful to you for your kindnesses and for your consideration. This has not been an easy campaign to cover, and I w just wanted to tell you that my one regret is that I didn't come to know you better sooner. I'd also like to thank my campaign staff, a group of individuals who believed in an age in which emotion seems to dominate and rationality takes a back seat, who believed that it was pos possible to have a constructive campaign rather than a destructive one, who believed that in fact it was possible to have positive uh, commercials rather than negative ones, to have a campaign in which we believed in the rationality and good sense of the people rather than emotionalism. So I wish to thank also a very small campaign staff who had very little money and lived on a shoestring for a long time. Stephen Glazer, my spokesperson. The Chief Justice could not have asked for a more forthright nor honest individual to be a spokesperson. I would also like to thank my treasurers from Grace Kawaguchi to George DeRoy to also Martin Huff. I would as well like to thank Richard Newhoff for all the hard work that he did in terms of the research. And I would as well like to thank the, uh, Mary Cochran for her wisdom and her grace through all of this. Let me give one final note, if I may, and that is to thank the people of California for the honor and the privilege to have been their Chief Justice for these last nine and a half years. Thank you very much. Good evening. And Chief Justice Rose Bird thanking supporters, uh, conceding that she lost her reaffirmation bid for her position on the state court. That is a moment in history, the first time voters in this state have ever failed to reconfirm a Chief Justice of the state Supreme Court. And taking the high road in defeat. And we will be back with more results of Election 86 after this.